Now, the Queensland Government has made another coronavirus exemption, this time allowing a mass gathering of up to 200 people who are being used as guinea pigs at tonight's clash between Collingwood and Port Adelaide. Queensland's opposition leader, Deb Frecklington, has slammed the move, claiming it's another rigged polling tactic. Here are her, here are her thoughts. First of all, it is just complete nonsense from the Palaszczuk government. It's inconsistent messaging. And what sort of message is it sending when the Premier of Queensland is saying only 10 people are allowed to gather uh, in, in a house or gather in one spot if you live in Brisbane? But yet they're going to send 200, I think it is actually, Gleeson, so 200 people into the Gabba tonight as a test. I mean, if anyone had any, any idea about or any question in their mind that the Premier of Queensland was using coronavirus as a political plaything, uh, well then that should be left um, to rest today. We've had um, terrible stories about people not being able to go to loved ones' funerals. We've seen people not being able to gather and yet the Palaszczuk government is going supposedly against health advice to test 200 people who we're calling guinea pigs, send them into the Gabba and worse than that, Gleeso, rather than listening to the health advice, they're actually going to survey them at the end of tonight and, and uh, ask them the question, how did it make you feel and whether you felt safe or not? So no doubt this is just another one of the polling, rigged polling um, by Premier Palaszczuk. Another day, another protest in the heart of Brisbane. What would the LNP do to rid the CBD of Brisbane of Extinction Rebellion protesters. This just has to stop. And what we've seen under Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk is these um, groups like Extinction Rebellion, uh, like these protest groups that we've seen block the city again today, be given really a free run. So there's a couple of issues here. The LNP introduced a, a bill that we wanted to debate in this, um, this term, um, but unfortunately the Palaszczuk government refused to let us. What that was all about was, you know, stronger laws and tougher penalties for these people who were doing the wrong thing. Whether it's shutting down businesses, you know, increasing fines to up to $13,000. Uh, so, Glee, so you'd have this commitment. We'd bring back that bill uh, that we had before the last parliament. And if we're lucky enough to get in, we'll introduce it and, and get to work sending a really clear message that it's just not OK. Now, there are a lot of people out there who say, that uh, the Premier and the Labor Party will benefit from the fact that they've kept Queenslanders essentially safe during this period that's been fraught with danger, particularly when you compare Queensland with a state like Victoria. But then we see the way in which the inconsistent messaging has been happening around border exemptions, around the way in which people can be treated medically in South East Queensland if they come from a northern New South Wales, uh, funeral exemptions, the whole messaging around inconsistencies Many are saying, political pundits, that that will weigh heavily against her. What are you, what's the general community saying to you? What Queenslanders want is they want good government, but they want decency as well. So what I've been calling for is consistency, compassion and common sense. So when it comes to the decision making uh, of, you know, issues around COVID, around the borders, around being upfront and honest with Queenslanders, that's what people of Queensland will get with me as Premier, which will be consistency, uh, common sense and compassion. But in relation to what the Premier has done, Gleeson, it is completely over top, the politicisation of COVID around the decision making. We have seen a ridiculous amount of money being spent on polling to tell the Premier whether her health response is going down well or not. She's spending so much money. You know, or a lot of money being spent, and I would suggest to you, I think there's over $5 million being spent on advertising, mm. pushing the Premier's message out there, which is effectively a ludicrous amount of money when we've got over 200,000 Queenslanders out of work. We want Queenslanders with a big, bold vision and an ambition for Queensland, uh, or a government, I should say, Gleeson, but yet you've got the Premier who has spent more in six months. She, in fact, has spent twice in six months what she spent in the whole year, the year before, in government advertising. It's completely against the Fitzgerald principles. It's completely against all convention of good government to spend an obscene amount of money on politicising and... Uh, 
obviously a global pandemic in this case, but in the lead up to an election, mm. it is simply unheard of. And it shows uh, that the Premier is more interested in getting herself elected rather than the 200,000 Queenslanders who would really love a government with a plan for the future. Well, I'm showing my age here, Deb Freckington, but I actually sat there when Tony Fitzgerald handed down that report in 1989. I was obviously only four at the time, but um, <laughs> I've got to say, when I, when, I, when, I, when I saw the amount of advertising, the amount of marketing that's being spent in this state in the name of propaganda, basically telling Queenslanders how good this government have handled this crisis. And I hark back to that day in 1989 when Tony Fitzgerald said there should not be any government advertising within six months of an election, otherwise it could be perceived as propaganda. Here we are, 31 years later or whatever it is, and we've got exactly that happening. I cannot believe in in Queensland in 2020 it's being allowed to happen. Would you introduce legislation which stopped this sort of thing happening? Well, Clee, so you're absolutely right. So the first thing is it is blatant propaganda and it is blatant politicisation uh, of COVID. It is not uh, pushing a message about keeping us safe. It is the, the politicisation of the government's own message uh, for their own benefit, which is to get to the election. Clee, so convention tells us that it shouldn't be, and that's what Fitzgerald uh, put down, and convention has always been, no government advertising of the politicisation, in particular like this one, for those six months. Now, the Premier of Queensland cannot even say that she's going to stop this propaganda when it becomes caretaker. It is in legislation right now that you cannot push this uh, through the caretaker uh, period. The Premier, though, Anastasia Palaszczuk, can't even answer that because she knows full well uh, that she will continue that advertising. And I think the people of Queensland are smarter than that. And I think they deserve to know how much of their money, how much of taxpayers' money is going to refund the election of Anastasia Palaszczuk. Someone who is more interested in, you know, famous people and footy stars coming into the state than people being able to attend a loved one's funeral. I mean, we can never forget that. And yet this is why the Premier is pushing out this poll, um, not only the polling, but the advertising as well. So, Gleeso, look, it's convention. It is there in legislation for the... For the um, the caretaker period and and I think it's pretty blatant that the Premier is is again just politicising uh, and looking after her own job. Now there's a strong belief that this election in just six weeks time will be won and lost in the regions that uh, the status quo will remain in all likelihood in South East Queensland but it's the regions where it will be won and lost. Now we know that the issues that are captivating our listeners, our viewers tonight a youth crime in the regions and, of course, the way in which the draconian one-size-fits-all policies around COVID have been applied in some places that haven't even seen a case of COVID. What are you hearing among the regions in Queensland as you get around the state? Yeah, well, Glee, so the regions really are hurting. And as many of your listeners would know, you know, I'm born and bred in regional Queensland and I represent a regional seat. So any government that I lead uh, will have a strong focus on regional Queensland. And I'm not shy to say that. You know, what, what is the most important thing right now is jobs for regional Queensland. We need to build up this, this economy of Queensland again. And one surefire way that we can do that is by backing agriculture, but also resources. And that's why I went out to New Hope, uh, out to Ackland, only in this last week, and committed to look after those workers. It's over 2,000 jobs that are hanging on that approval. We've got a Premier here in Queensland that's hiding behind uh, a judicial decision that has got nothing to do with the approvals. And so I can tell you this right now, Glee, so the further you get out of Brisbane, people want to see the resources industry backed, they want to see the agricultural industry backed, they want to see some money being spent on their roads, and they also want a government that is serious about tackling crime, particularly youth crime, uh, in regional Queensland. And, and when you talk about places like Cairns and Townsville, where the crime rates are up through the roof, and that's why I've already 
committed an extra 60 police officers for Townsville, an extra 60 police officers for Cairns. There'll be more announcements to come in relation to those boots on the ground. But probably the most important thing in relation to crime is that we're going to toughen up the laws, bring back breach of bail as an mm. offence, really send a strong message to these crims that if you do the crime, you will do the time. Well, there she is, Deb Frecklington, opposition leader in Queensland.